It is the morning show that you can listen to anytime, anywhere. And uh, actually, you have to be able to listen to anytime, anywhere, because Dr. Sujay Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook, there's no telling family. There's no telling what part of the world she's in. Now, you were just, uh, well, first off, how you doing? I'm fine, but you know, it takes fun to know one. You're all over the globe. <laughs> so, you know, uh, one week you're in Florida, the next week, I don't know where you are. So equally, igualmente, as they say in Spanish. Yeah, we were in Nashville, Tennessee last week uh, for the uh, GMA Dove Awards. It was, Dr. Sujay, it was absolutely amazing. And let me tell you what really impressed me so much. The GMA, the Gospel Music Association in the past, uh -huh. There's been some criticism that it is um, mainly uh, our Caucasian brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. Jackie Patillo, who is the new the CEO, she's been CEO for about five years. She, uh, a African American sister, she made a point. She said, "I want to diversify um, GMA because it needs to look like our country." And let me tell you something: when we when we walked in there to see just the rainbow of people, uh, black white, Asian, uh, uh, East, um, it, it was, it was just, it was just absolutely amazing. So big ups to Jack and Patillo, but you know, uh, ambassador, why can't we be like that all week long? Well, we need to, um, similarly, we're at getting ready to celebrate women in ministry. We're starting with black women in ministry because, and the unsung heroes of our faith, because there's so many trailblazers and so many, who have really paved the way, who have never been celebrated. So we're starting that Friday, December 2nd in Washington, DC. But I hope that it grows to like the double award size and that we celebrate women in ministry from all over. And so we're doing it at the National Press Club, starting with about two or 300 people. But we know that's where everything starts and we wanna make it like in, an annual event where women in ministry who are our faith leaders, who are caregivers for our community, are celebrated from every range, from music to pastor, to prayer warriors, to those in publishing who are making a difference. And so we start on December 2nd, it's called the Celebration of Black Women in Ministry and the Unsung Sheroes. It's on Eventbrite and people can also find out by sending us an email to BWIM, which stands for Black Women in Ministry, Thrive 50, the number 50 at gmail.com. And we'd love to have you. So it's, so it's not too late to register to be part of it? Not at all. Tickets are on sale. People are buying tables. So it's even growing larger than we thought. We have 25 honorees, some who are deans and presidents of seminaries, others who have been pastors, others who are heads of denominations like Lot Carey and who are presidents. And so we're going to sing the song of the unsung heroes and just see who's been making a difference for generations. It's Mike Chandler, along with Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put I'm I'm gonna buy me a pair of skates so that <laughs> I can keep up with you. I understand that you were in Norfolk, Virginia. My stopping my old stopping grounds, my radio station. Well, one of our radio stations is there. Tell me about Norfolk, Virginia. Well, you're gonna have to buy a surfboard because you know I like water. So I go places where there's water, which Norfolk is beside. So I'll find skates for you. You find a surfboard to buy me. <laughs> but it was the 150th anniversary of the Jerusalem Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Wendell Johnson. And we've been friends. This is my 40th year in ministry, and we've been friends for those 40 years. He was the first uh, male pastor that I met once I was um, ordained. And we've been friends. We call each other brother and sister because they're the same, uh, I have the same maiden name. And it was just wonderful to celebrate with that congregation who's now in person on their 150th anniversary. But I'm wearing the shirt for Thrive which is the Black Women in Ministry. And then right behind me is the Global Black Women's Chamber of Commerce. So this is a year that I'm saluting uh, Black pastors, Black women in ministry, Black business women who are owning businesses. It's time to celebrate those who have been really the backbone of the nation. And as the president says, the soul of the nation. Wow. Now you've been in the ministry for a while, quite yeah. a while. Now, when you first entered the ministry, I just got to believe that some of the traditional brothers and sisters and sisters going, oh, man, women should not be preaching. How is it today? Well, you know, um, I will say certainly there were some of those then and there's still some of those now. 
But I think that when God called, now I think, I know that when God calls you, he also blazes the path that you have to walk on. And it, I, I was chosen to be a, a trailblazer in many respects. In the New York City Police Department is the first female chaplain as a pastor in the American Baptist Church is the first black woman elected. And so I think that God calls us with the gifts and the gifting that we have to be able to not be um, bitter, but to learn how to be better. And what I've chosen to do with my life is open the door, not just open the door for other black women in ministry, but help bring them along. And so with the Lilly Endowment, we got a grant for $1.5 million to help mentors, black women mentors, mentor another generation of black women. So it's the first generation of black women mentoring black women. And it's about helping us uh, bring them through the doors and creating legacy. If every generation has to be the first, then there's a problem with that. So like Kamala says, I'm the first, I won't be the last. And for me, it's like, I was the first of many. And that was my terminology. I was the first of many. And I think that that's what we have to continue to do. So I never listened to those who told me I shouldn't. I only listened to God who said you should. <laughs> it's Mike Chandler along with the feisty Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook. I can imagine, I, Dr. Sujay, I can imagine this. So you're talking with Bill Clinton or either uh, uh, President Barack Obama, right? And and then President Barack Obama says, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And then uh, uh, Dr. Sujay say, well, you need to listen to me. Calm down, Barack. Calm <laughs> down. Has that conversation ever happened? No, actually, you know, uh, any times that I was called in for uh, to be a confidant, it was not about you should or should not. It was always to listen. I always say, listen before you speak, listen more than you speak. And I certainly always have the respect of the office as I also require for people to respect the office of pastor. So it was never about you telling me what to do. It was, uh, what is God's conversation in this? And I think that that's the best posture to have. So I'm a New Yorker. We kind of talk a little rough, a little rough around the edges, a little feisty, <laughs> but we certainly know when to respect. And the answer is protocol. You know, I'm doing on Clubhouse this month, the P's, every P that the woman on the world stage needs to have. And we're on Clubhouse uh, at 6 p.m. tonight, Wednesday, uh, 6 p.m. on Wednesday nights, excuse me, and Tuesday nights. And it's about the wow woman, the woman on the world stage. What, is, what are the P's you need to know? How you pace your life, the places that you'll go. But one of the big P's is protocol. Understanding where you are in that chain, whether you're a diplomat, whether you're a lay person, whether you're a pastor, whether you're called in as a confidant, you understand protocol. So when people met with Queen Elizabeth, there was a protocol. Even with President Barack and Michelle met with her, there was a protocol on how you greet the queen. And I think that for the queens of ministry, there's protocol. And for the presidents of the United States, there's protocol. And so I always respect that. I respect the office. Um, and I think that that's what I try to model for everyone, respect the office. It's Mike Chandler, along with Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook. She's a pastor, a mother, a world shaker. Now, uh, Dr. Sujay, you gotta help me with this. Help me un, you know, un unravel this. As African-Americans, we certainly have, as a group of people, experienced uh, discrimination. Tell me this. How is it that uh, if we've experienced all of that discrimination from other folk, how is it that African-American men, African-American pastors, African-American communities can discriminate against women in the ministry if we've already seen that kind of stuff and then we do it? Help me, help me, help me, help me. That was a question I raised. I was one of the first to preach on the stage of the Hampton Ministers Conference. This is back in 91. And I raised, I used the question from Martin Luther King's book, uh, where do we go from here? And he was dealing as a people, where do we go? And I dealt with as a people within a people, where do we go from here when we discriminate? How do you say that we can walk together against those who discriminate against us, but at the same time, you're discriminating against women? And I think that that's the question we need to raise. I will say that there are quite a few who have been a uh, change. You know, I told Jesus it would be all right to change my name. And there have been a lot. I mean, I have friends. And every now and then, you know, if they say something a little sexist or whatever, sounding a little superior, I mean, I check them on it because I have the tenure and I have the tone to do that now. 
And so I check someone in and they hear themselves and they're like, okay. And then there are times that men want to hang with men and women want to hang with women. So I try to make sure that I isolate which events are um, sexist and which events are just, you know, we want to hang with each other. So when I go on Selah by the Sea, it is clearly intended for women to have a rest period because we have issues um, that are different than men. And so I try to make sure that I isolate what are the different things that I'm seeing. Um, and when you're in 40 years, you can you can call people on it and check them on it. And I think that's the advantage of longevity. And, uh, you know, so I've had, I would say overall, I've had a good run. Um, and I am just thankful to be one who can help the next generation abound. Well, you've certainly helped me. I've learned so much over the past couple of years that you and I have been friends and on this morning show. Now we've got to back up. I want uh, all of our listeners to know when to join you on Wednesday night on Clubhouse and get just give us some background time and, uh, and, and what it's about, Clubhouse. Yeah, actually we're changing to Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Clubhouse is an audio app and you can come in if you have an iPhone or an iPad. And our room is called the women, the woman on the world stage, women on the world stage, plural, the wow woman, W-O-W for women on the world stage. And you can come and join us. It will have my name as well as co-hosts that are joining me. But anyone who comes in is invited to engage and speak once you uh, come into the room. And it's exciting because not only are we having dialogues and um, interesting conversations like, but we're gonna be interviewing wonderful people like Rebe Rebecca Dang, who was one of the female soldiers that was um, adopted by the Army of Rwanda. We hear a lot about the boy soldiers who were brought over to America, but nobody knew that there were female soldiers, just like we're seeing the women kings that Viola Davis is doing as a movie. There were many women in Africa who had to fight in the armies um, because they were drafted. And so we're going to be having dialogues and interviews and hearing from women who are on the world stage, how they operate, how they face discrimination and how they fought discrimination, how they carved out a place for themselves where they were not bitter, but they took that and they made sure that they were better. And so we're going to have conversations where you don't have to stay where you are. Some people say, well, I have to deal with the hand I was dealt. Well, you start with that, but I, I play a lot of bid whist and you can take another card and, and you can um, make a hand that you didn't have when you started in that game. You can pull, you can draw from that card pile that everybody else wanted to throw away, but it may be just the card you needed. So I say maybe, maybe people wanted to throw you away, but you're just the card that God needed. So don't ever feel inferior. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I'm the queen. Uh, whether you say so or not, I know I'm royalty. <laughs> I love it. Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook, the, the, the advisor to presidents. Now, this is what I need you to do. I know I know we're pressed for time, but this is what I need you to do. First off, you mentioned bid whist. Uh, I don't know if you are a true bid whist player or not, but when folks slap their forehead, <laughs> what the, uh, come on now, let me see if you, you're real. What, what is, does that signify? That means that you have the card that will stop that person. They thought, <laughs> they, they, thought that they were going to make the bid, but you have the stopper. And so what I want you to know is that today I am a stopper. You may have thought you could get over on me, but God said, no six, no Trump. I've got your stopper. <laughs> ah, y'all, y'all should see her. She just uh, had God slapping the ace on his forehead. <laughs> hey, Dr. CJ, I love you so much. Thank you for pouring into my life over the past couple of years. I know we're the same age, but but uh, wisdom tells you sit at the feet of the of the wise. Sit yes. at the feet of the wise. So I want to thank you for allowing me to sit at your feet over these years. Okay, and that's Susan with the Z, so you remember me, Susan Johnson Cook. Go to Eventbrite, look for um, Celebrating Black Women, and we'd love to have you at the National Press Club on December 2nd. So thank you for this time. You're always so generous, and you're always such a blessing. All right, then. Well, have a great day. Guys, listen, it's the morning show you can listen to anytime, anywhere. Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook with a Z and Mike Chandler. <laughs> Heard all around the world. Dr. Suji, I'll see you later. You too. Have a great day. Bye-bye.
All right. Well, let me get to work. And I I, uh, I didn't send it to you last week. I got distracted by the Dove Awards, but uh, I will send you this one. I promise you I will. Okay. Do you have any clips from the Dove Awards? Or can we see it online, you think? I, I'm sure we can. I will find it and I'll send you the link. Okay. So I want you to help me be one of the producers because we want to make this Black Women in Ministry like that at that level. Uh, we, you know, we're starting small, but we want to make it where people want to come, whether it's on the stage of the Apollo or we want to make it great. So keep me in prayer in terms of how we get that rolling. OK, well, let me know how I can help. Uh, if I don't know anything else, I know uh, that kind of stuff about expanding on on these digital platforms. Um, I will uh, I'm going to tune in and just listen to you guys and see what we can do. Do you record? Do you can you record off of? Uh, um, well, me, we're. We're videoing this, but we're not live streaming it because it's a ticketed event. Got it. Got it. So yeah, we haven't learned how to, if we had a TV station doing it while we were doing it, that'd be different, but we're not live streaming um, this year. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, well, let's, let's peel that onion back. All okay. right, Dr. Sujay, take it easy. Let me get back to my family and find out what we're going to do about this uh, home going yeah. situation. Love to April. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Bye-bye.